At the gallop! Oh! Fort Laramie, starring Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier, the saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire, and the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Um, how long would you say you've known him, Patchin? I had that proud honor, I guess, eight, ten years now. Of course, I ain't had the privilege of serving with him since the war. I still don't see why you just don't go right up to him and make yourself known. Well, I wouldn't intrude on the captain that way, Drury. He's a busy man, tracking engines, planning battles. Besides, just because I recollect him so well don't mean he'd remember me. But... He's a kindly man. Oh, the time will come. The just right time. I'll acknowledge myself to Captain Lee Quince. <laughs> I'll bet you he'll be proud knowing you asked special to serve under him again. Maybe surprised, even. Of course, I've only been with the company a week now. But it seems to me the men hold him right high in their thought. I ain't been here long myself. But there's not a man I know wouldn't lay down his life for Captain Quince. If need be. Well, now, that's nice. I declare that's real nice. Captain ever talk much about the war? Any of his experiences? Well, like I say, I ain't been here long myself. But the men say he's not much for talk about anything. He never was. Even when he was younger, when most men talk free, he was more for action than words. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, ain't it? How you can sense such so much good feeling in a man without him talking much that's a funny thing all right i like to draw duty with the captain i sure do i always have the feeling that no matter what he's been thinking ahead planning for us i feel safe riding with the captain of course it's hard to tell what a man's thinking if you don't make his thoughts known it don't matter to me much what he's thinking so long as he's acting good. There's yeah, the big thing. How man acts. Uh, oh, this sure is different country out here. Different kind of fighting country, too. How you mean? We fought closer in the war. Like, uh, like there'd be a stream here, you see? Yeah. See, it was a kind of clearing, you know. And on one side, the ribs would be cowering in the trees. We'd be standing firm on the other side. Now, sooner or later, somebody's got to make a move for that water. For horses and for themselves. I tell you, you get thirsty. You get so you care more about water than living. Anybody's living. Well, mostly, we're lucky out here. <laughs> Seems like there's more cricks and man's streams. man's got a right to a drink when he's dry. More than dry, your insides get to feeling like sand, dust. Like though it's going to crumble. Patchin? What's the matter with you, Patchin? Uh, you, you say something, Drury? Ask if something was wrong. Wrong, boy? No, no, nothing's wrong, I... I just get a thirst sometime. You talked yourself dry. It ain't hot. We got plenty of water. There's a stream not 50 yards from you. I know that. I know. Well, you, you were saying about the fighting being different in the war. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, we fought closer. 
Man to man sometimes. A man to dismount, fix his saber to his carbine, and such a bloody slash in the way you never saw. I ain't seen nothing like that in the West. Out here seems like you do more chasing than anything else. We've been tracking engines how long? Two days now? I ain't drawing my sights on one. If you drew it. That ain't saying they ain't here. Somewheres. Captain Quince must think they're around. Well, you know I'm not saying that. Why, there ain't a man among you come less near to criticizing the captain's judgment. Are you forgetting, boy? I know better than any of you what a great man he is. Looks like their campsite ahead, Mr. Seibertz. Must have made camp here last night. Yes, sir. We've been just about a day behind them all the way, haven't we, Captain? And it looks like we're going to stay that way. I'll say one thing for them. They pick good campsites. Captain, it's the end of the fourth day. Didn't Major Daggett say if we could catch him in four days, fine. If not, report back to Fort Laramie. Yeah. Those are the orders, Mr. Seibertz. Seems like a waste somehow. All this riding only to turn back. One thing, we don't lose many men this way. That's true, Captain. They won't be the first who slipped off the reservation, got away with it. Sergeant! Go! We'll make camp ahead at Bitter Creek. Yes, sir. I guess we lost him, sir. The Sioux? We never had him to lose, Sergeant. No, sir. I declare, Captain. I'm real sorry about that. I don't know how I'm done. I... You better get on with your job, Trooper. Patchen's the name. That's if you don't remember. I remember. I kept hoping I'd bump into you, Captain, sir. Sure enough, I did. You been with B Company long? Just a week. I didn't want to bother you, seeing you was heading up this big engine chasing operation. I didn't see any engines myself, but the men keep telling me they must be somewhere around. The Captain Quince wouldn't be out chasing them. We're moving back to Fort Laramie starting tomorrow. When we get there, I'll see you get a transfer to another company. Now, I'm sorry to hear you say that, Captain. I've been looking forward to this reunion longer than I can tell. Tell the truth, I thought you'd hold a higher rank by now, seeing men like Custer and McKenzie are generals. And you're their equal, I could swear to that. I've been telling them... You've got a job to do, Trooper. Better get on with it. Is that an order, Captain, sir? That's an order. Yes, sir. Oh, Captain. Well? I thought maybe you'd want to know. It didn't just happen my being in your company. I asked for this duty special. On account of us being such old friends. I guess you remembered them all right, Captain. When was that, Drury? Patchin, sir. He was worried for fear you might not remember who he was. That so? I told him. I knew you'd recollect. You're just not the kind of man to forget a friend. He's been talking to you a lot, Drury? I'll put it this way, sir. I know you a lot better since meeting up with Patchen. I wonder. I feel I do. The rest of the men, they feel like I do. <laughs> we wasn't surprised to hear it exactly, but we sure didn't know you mapped campaigns for General Sheridan. General Cook, too. And all them acts of bravery when you led the Trooper. charge... Trooper. Yes, sir? You got duty with the mess sergeant, right? That's right, sir. Move out. Yes, sir.
Captain, sir? What is it, Gorris? The camp's most bedded down, Captain. The pickets are out. Who's on picket duty? It's our last night out, sir. Corporal Jenkins used the rest of the patrol. Who are they, Gorris? Well, sir, he put Vickers and Culp up by the band. Over the west, he's got Stevens and Holt. Then over south, Beal and Patchen. I told Corporal Jenkins no picket duty for Patchen, and I meant it. Captain. No picket duty for Patchen, that's an order. Yes, sir. Captain? Mind if I say something, sir? I mind if anybody says something, Mr. Seibertz. I just want to ask you why. I wouldn't bother asking, Mr. Seibertz. It's about the men, Captain. I have the right to speak out about the men. You've got the right. They're tired, sir. They've ridden four days out, three days back. We've been moving like someone was chasing us. Only no one is. Any other observations, Mr. Seibertz? Yes, sir. Everyone stood his turn at picket duty. Everyone but Patchen. You're getting awful close to asking why again, Mr. Seibertz. I'm sure you have a reason, Captain. I hope it's a good one, because the men don't understand. I think we got a morale problem. We won't have it long. We'll be back at the fort tomorrow. Captain, if you'd like good to... Good night, Mr. Seibertz. <laughs> that all you have to say, Captain? Well, it's clear I'm asking for Patchen's transfer. But you won't say why. If you're talking about those forms you fill out, Major, put down for the good of company morale. I'm interested in company morale. I've watched, I've listened to Lieutenant Seibertz, I've talked to Sergeant Gorse. Now I'm going to ask you, Captain. It, it's personal. We haven't got room for personal quarrels, Lee. Oh, this is so little like you, I don't even believe it. Nobody who knows you believes it. You don't let these things happen. We're going to talk about that transfer? No, we're going to talk about morale. Well, suppose I transfer this man. What good would that do? You've got a company out there. They're going to be here whether Patchen's transferred or not. They've watched this man get to you. As nearly as I can tell, he's been killing you with kindness. That's what he's trying to do. Why? Why? He hates my guts. Goes way back. No picket duty for Patchen. Why? I like my camp safe when I'm in hostile territory, Major. It'll be a lot of trouble to get his army record clear back to the war. But I'll go to that trouble, Lee, if you don't tell me. I saved his life once. He's never forgiven me. That's an odd thing to say. It's the truth. I saved a lousy, gutless life. He knows it is. He lives with it. He served under you? I served under him. Patchen was an officer? Captain Joseph Patchen, New York Cavalry. It was before I knew you, Major. Remember the little wars? Us on one side of a stream, them on the other. And both of you needing the water in between? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, five days and nights we sat there looking across at him, waiting, just waiting. We had a little water. We could have held out. The men were doing fine. He ordered a charge? He didn't order anything. He just split wide open crazy. Took off after that stream before anyone knew what hit. The men thought it was a charge, him being in command. We lost half a company. You hate his guts, too, don't you? I... Every good man's got fear in him. I don't mind honest fear. I hate a coward, Major. You were commissioned on the field, Lee. 
Was it there? Yeah. He can't forget that either. Surely he was relieved of his command. Major Daggett, sir. Sergeant Gorse. Corporal of the Guard reports two deserters, sir. It's Patchen and Drury. Pick your men, Sergeant. Pan out around the house, check the barn. Yes, sir. Holt, Vickers, cover the barn. You, Beal, Cup, the corral. Stevens and Fredericks. You, Stewart, you come with me. Afternoon to you, mister. They trample that young wheat the army will owe me. Uh, we didn't come here to trample your crop. We're looking for deserters. New kind of grain, supposed to be special for the high plains. I put a lot of money in that grain. I want it to come up. Two men, one just turned 20, the other older, my age or better. I thought the army was for fighting Indians. Give that up, didn't they? You need men to fight Indians, mister. Don't look at me. I got enough trouble trying to prove up land like this. Didn't intend to write off. I meant to stay with horses. Thought I could raise them. Good enough grazing land. Well, the Indians run the horses off. I'd get them grown strong on the grass. About that time, here they'd come. Indians. You don't keep horses now? A couple. They're not extra. I'm going to have to look in your house, mister. Well, I suppose you are. How many did you say you was looking for? Two. Got quite a few soldiers along looking for two men. There's some kind of penalty for hiding soldiers who take a notion to run. The army don't take kindly to it, mister. Couldn't shoot a body, though, could you? You've seen them? You don't see many folks out this way. You and your soldiers are more nice seen in months. How long since you've been in Laramie Village? Oh, a long time. I stay pretty close here. find him here. Thought you'd want to see for yourself, though. Captain, found this in the shed but a barn. You prefer a cavalry saddle, mister? I'm gonna have to find that out. Ain't used to it yet. Did it help if we knew which way they headed when they left? To tell you the truth, it's hard for me to think they was here at all. Ah, oh, let's go, Gorse. Hey, Captain. His boots. Sure, he's wearing cavalry boots, owns a cavalry saddle. But he hasn't seen anyone. You trample that young wheat, I'll send the army a bill. up to the house at all, Captain? Talk to him? Yeah, talking to him didn't do any good. Kind of a sniveling one. Kept wanting to know why the captain himself didn't come to him, ask the questions. He took it real personal, like. The captain himself's about through talking. I come up against any more crawly settlers, Gorse, I'm apt to start breaking a few necks. I'm feeling a little mean myself. Three plates of warm grub sitting on his table. Him all alone in the house. He never heard of two deserters. We'll find him. The men want to awful bad. For you, Captain. That'd be some comfort. That'd be some comfort, Gorse. I sure feel bad about Drury. He was going to make a good trooper. Yeah, I know. I thought sure Patchen would be out here near the stream. He gets an awful thirst sometimes. Let's check that barn again. Yes, sir. There's only about two hours of daylight left. I hate to give him a night start in this country. We're not going to. Oh, Captain. He 
You, uh, are the captain. Speak your mind, mister. We're busy. I'd, uh, like to talk to you alone. I'll check the barn, sir. All right, talk. I've been, uh, sitting up in the house trying to remember. I ain't sure, but... Seems to me I read somewhere once that there was a reward for turning in deserters. Now, did I just dream that? There's a twenty dollar reward, mister. Only twenty dollars? Twenty dollars. Ain't very much, is it? I, uh, I don't suppose uh, you're prepared to go any higher. I'm not prepared to go that high, mister. But the army figures it's worth twenty dollars. Twenty dollars a piece? That's it. Hmm. Eight men looking for two men, and the total price on their heads is forty dollars. Ain't no bargain, Captain. It sure isn't. Total pay for the eight men looking is four dollars a day, fifty cents a piece. Is that all? And the price isn't just for their heads, mister. We'd have to insist on the rest of them, too. In here, Captain. He was in the loft. He called down to me, then he come down himself. Patching up there, too, boy? No, sir. No, sir, he run. I don't know how far... I don't know how long ago. Captain, I don't know nothing. You stay with him, Gorse. I'm going to find Patchen. Yes, sir. No, Captain. Don't you leave yet. You hear me out, will you, please? Sergeant Gorse will hear you out. P- P- Patchen's got everything, Captain. He- he's got himself every kind of gun you ever saw. His and mine. All we could buy is steel. He's going to be waiting for you, Captain. I hope he is. Oh, you you got to know my shame. It don't seem now it could have happened to me. It worked on me so slow, I... I didn't even know it was happening. But I know now. I feel all the ugly shame of it. Talking's not much good now, Drury. I I ain't talking to save myself, Captain. I know that ain't right. I know it can't be. I'm talking to understand. And for you to know, I'm I'm crawling with the shame of it. The crawling's uglier than the shame, boy. Patchen? That'd be your way, wouldn't it? Big, brave, alone. You must be the bravest man there is, Quince. Come on down, Patchen. I ain't coming down. I waited too long for this. I'm staying right here, and you're staying right there. You got plenty of water? Understand I ain't aiming for you, Quince. I'm just trying out my arsenal. That was my pistol. You're never going to last without water, Patchen. I've got two canteens, mine and Drury's. You could hit me if you tried good. You got a reason for not killing me, Patchen? That last was my rifle. I got me a buffalo gun off the settler, blow you clean away. You wouldn't even leave no spot, Quince. Come on down. We're gonna do this slow, Captain. Just you and me. Maybe my shots will get a little closer to you from time to time. We'll keep it slow, Wyatt. I want you to die a long time, Quince. Five days and five nights of dying. Remember, Quince? I remember. You want me to die, all right. Long time of dying. But you aren't the man to kill me, Patchen. You ain't coming after. 
out to me. You ain't that brave, Quince. Don't take a brave man to come after you, Patron. Just takes a man. I hated you a long time. If I have to do, I could hate you dead. You hate yourself, Patchen. Wouldn't feel good killing me. You'd still have yourself. You're going to kill me? That what you coming to do? Kill me? <laughs> Please. Please don't kill me. <laughs> I'm not going to kill you, Patchen. <laughs> Wouldn't feel good. Killing a coward. Get up. <laughs> Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by Kathleen Height, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Paul Duboff, James Nusser, and Herb Vigran. Jack Moyles is Major Daggett, and Harry Bartell is Lieutenant Seibertz. Company tension. Dismiss. Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Each year, new automobiles come equipped with new and better devices for safety and comfort. But there's one device for comfort and safety that you'll have to manufacture for yourself, no matter how advanced our technology becomes. And that device is a smile. A sense of humor and a friendly attitude toward other drivers on the highway is sure to earn courtesy and consideration in return. And courtesy and consideration are big safety factors on the highway. Check the gas, the oil, and make sure you've brought along your smile. Thank you.